Good afternoon, students. Welcome to another edition of our lesson on biology for SS2. Topic, parasites of livestock. Parasites of livestock, which is the same thing as farm animals. By the end of this lesson, students will be able to one, define the term parasites. Two, explain the two types of parasites with examples. And three, describe the life cycle of tenia solum, which is step one. Before we continue with today's lesson, our last discussion was on animal diseases, which we saw different causes of animal diseases like viral disease diseases bacterial diseases uh, fungal diseases and viral diseases and so on for today we continue with that mood on parasites of farm animals i want to start with the definition of parasite what is a parasite? What do you mean by a parasite? A parasite is an organism that lives in or on another organism known as a host. A parasite is an organism that lives in or on another organism known as a host, deriving nourishment and comfort from the host but causing harm or injury on the host. What do you mean by that? Any organism, the parasite can live in, that is inside, or can live on, that is outside, on another organism. And what is that? the name of that organism? Is the host. What do that parasite do? It's deriving nourishment and comfort from the host. That is making the host to be what malnourished, thereby causing harm to the host. Parasites are usually smaller than the host, yes, because the host is bigger and the parasite is small. Let's see. The relationship, we call it parasitism, the benefits, the parasite bed benefit the parasite, but the host is malnourished. What do you mean by parasitism? Parasitism is defined as an association between two organisms. The organism is the parasite and the host, in which the parasite derive all the nutrients, that is nourishment, from the host. At the end of that association or that relationship, the host is malnourished, that is damaged or harm at that process. Take note, for you to differentiate between these three things, a parasite, parasitism, the host. Please take note. Parasitism is an association, or you call it the relationship between the parasite and the host. Deriving the parasite derived nourishment from the host, thereby arming the host. Take note that organism live in, could be inside or outside the host. The host is, it could be internal or external, or it could be outside the host or internal, which is inside the host or outside the host environment. We want to look at some of the examples of parasites. We have the internal parasite, it could be in form of a bacteria, could be in form of a protozoa, please take note, could be in form of fungi, could be in form of tapeworm. Those ones are the parasite that live inside the host. Then the other categories is the parasite that live on the host. That is outside the host. We can call it to be external parasite. For example, we have fleet, lice, 
lynch. All these ones are external parasites. The parasite could be an animal or could be in plant. The plant parasite, we call it what, for example, is duda. Duda is a typical example of organism or plant that is affected by parasite. And what happened in that parasite? The duda plants, which absorb water from its coast and making its own sugar, but photosynthesis in the green stems. Now let's consider the types of parasites. We have two types of parasites I've already explained. We have those one inside and those one outside. The one inside, we call it endoparasite, with the name imply endo, meaning inside. This parasite live in the body of the host. Example, we have tapeworm, we have roundworm, we have liver fluids. Tapeworm, roundworm, liver fluids are endoparasites. And the other ones like um, tick and mites are ectoparasites. You find it outside the host, on the host. For today's lesson, we want to consider the endoparasite at least two examples of the uh, endoparasite. For example, tapeworm and round or liver fluid. We want to consider the tapeworm and liver fluid, which is endoparasite. But for ectoparasite, we'll consider that in the next lesson. Endoparasite, tapeworm. Tape one, which is the same thing as tenia solum. Remember in classification, this is a scientific name of tape one, tenia solum. Having two names, remember what we did last time? The binomial giving two names to the organism. Tenia, the first name, solum, the second name. Please take note of the spelling, solum, solum. Now, how do this uh, tape one look like? want to look at the cons uh, this description. Tape worm is long. Already you know it's endoparasite. They live inside the host. There are flat worms. Flat worm with very small head, neck, and segmented body. What are the parts that make up the uh, tape worm? The small head, generally the name given to the head of tape worm, we call it collect neck and segmented body. Please take note of this. We have three categories. The small head, generally the name, the head of tape one we call is collex. Then you see the neck, then you see the segmented body. Tape one belongs to the phylum called platyhelminthes. Take note belongs to the phylum called platyhelminthes. You know tape worm is animal kingdom, animalia, but the phylum is platyhelminthes. And what class is tape worm? We call it cystopoda. The class of tape worm, we call it cystopoda. Let's look at the animal infested. The animal that these parasites can affect. Tape worm are host specific and several species are bound. Let's see. We can find it in pig, swine. You can find it in sheep. You can find it in cattle. You can also find it in fish. Let's see the name given to the tape worm. With the tape worm in pig. The name given to tape worm in pig, we call it tenia solum. Tenia solum. That of sheep, we call it Monizia expansa. Take note of the scientific name, Monizia expansa. We have it in cattle. That of cattle, the scientific name, we call it Tenia saginata. Tenia saginata. And the last one there, you can find it in fish. Which number one, we have two categories in fish. We have the one that have dendrites, the hair-like structures. 
we have those ones that have the head, which you know is a small head. In fish, we have two species of it, Diphylobotarium dendritium, those one with um, dendrite. Okay, the second species is Diphytobotarium scolex. This one possesses the head. We move on to the diagram. Look at how the tip one look like, especially the tenia solum. You can see the head. The head part of a tip one we call is collex. It's made up of rosterium. The first thing that you see in the head of the tip one is rosterium. Then you have the soccer, the soccer here. Then you have the hooks for attachment. Then this is the neck part and all these are the segmented body. The segmented body, we call it prograteites. Segmented body, we call it what? Prograteites. We have the mature one and immature one. The immature one, you see the immature one first, then before we have the mature one. The segmented body tech node is called prograteite, and the head is called scolex made up of so many three structures, the rosterium on top, the hook, and the sucker, then the neck. Let's look at adaptation of tech worm to the gut of man. What do I mean by adaptation? It's in here looking at the tech worm, tech worm possesses some structure, having features, we call it adaptive features, that enable the tape worm to cook, to adapt very well to the intestine of the host, which is the gut. What do I mean by gut? Gut simply means allometric canal of man. So adaptation of tape worm to the allometric canal of man. We want to find, look at the structures the structure possessed by tape worm that enable tape worm to do what? To live successfully in the respective host. One of the structure is hook. You know hook is for attachment to the gut wall. Another structure is soccer. Is also for the attachment to the gut wall. What do I mean by that? That means this collex, which is the head part or head region of the tape worm, have two structure. Even resterium is there. This hook and sucker enable the parasite to affirm very well to the alimentary canal wall of the host. Number two adaptation is that. A mere looking at tip one is flat. The structure is like ribbon. That is why we call it ribbon-like structure, flat. And the tip one body fits into the gut of the man. Number two, or number three, sorry. Large surface area of its body. Large surface, that means tape one possesses large surface area. The body has a large surface area. And what is the usefulness of that large body surface? It is to allow absorption of food from the guts. Number four adaptation is that tape one has a fast rate of proliferation of prograteite to ensure survival of the body organism or ensure perpetuation of the species, that is in terms of reproduction. Since they are hermaphrodite, they can reproduce as they like. Okay, the five adaptation is that the surface of its body is thin. How is the, the surface of tape one look like? Very thin and permeable. Permeable means is allow easy passage, allow the absorption of food. Okay, number six, adaptation. The wall of its body is resistant to digestion by host digestive enzyme. I take it again. The wall of its body is resistant to digestion by host digestive enzyme. Let's look at the life cycle of tape worm. How do tape worm reproduce or recycle themselves. 
Sebu worm is a maphrodite. A maphrodite means a both male and female cell in them, not separate, but in one. It fertilizes itself. The mature fertilized prograteites, remember, prograteites are the segments, mature segments, containing eggs, pass out with the feces of the primary host. Primary host. Which organism is the primary host? Man, the cut of man. And are picked up by cow. Cow or pig are the secondary host. In whose intestine? They dissolve and ash into exantans embryo. Take note of the spelling, embryo. So when they pick, pick it, it will dissolve and ash into the embryo. We call it exan. That is having six segments. Exa. Exa has to do with six as a number. Exacant embryo. That is six hooks which bear six hooks already I've mentioned. A person get infected beef or pork, that is pork meat, which is not adequately cooked. That is how the tap one get into our system. Each embryo develop into bladder wall. When you take in the, the tap one infected or uh, the, the meat, the pork meat infected with tap one, the, f the next embryo will be bladder worm. Bladder worm, you call it cystocerus. Cystocerus. Cystocerus, sorry. In the muscles of cow or pig, it will go straight to the muscles of that cow or pig. If big beef or pork containing bladder worm is eaten by man, the former becomes active in the intestine and begin to grow into adult tape worm. Look at the life cycle of tape worm, what I've just explained. See, the tenia solum, infection by injecting raw or uncooked pig or dog meat with cystocus. After that, it will go straight to the, the human intestine, the gut intestine, the host intestine. Discharge the prograteite. Prograteites are the segment full of eggs into the environment like trophies. Into the soil, contamination by open defecation. After that, the pig will pick it up and human contaminated food or water. Or through auto infection, acquired through parasite. You see, that is the tape worm there. Then that cystocerus develop into pig muscle. That is how it will recycle. What are the symptoms of tapeworm infection? If somebody is infected with tapeworm, how will it? What are the signs? We we'll have the dom abdominal pain or discomfort. You see no seer diarrhea and anemia that is shortage of blood let's look at the economic importance of tape worm to man economic importance of tape worm to man and we talk about economic importance the good and the bad things from the tape worm to man you will see weakness that is one of the economic important in digestion that is difficult to do what to digest what food vomiting anemia, that is loss of blood, and abdominal pain or discomfort. All these are the economic importance of type 1. Take note of this word, teniasi. Teniasi. Teniasi is the combined effect of the symptom. The combined effect of this symptom is called teniasi. How can we control or prevent type 1? One of the control measures of type 1 is meat should be examined before cells. Meat should be examined before cells. Number two, meat should be properly cooked. Number three, proper sanitation to avoid contact with feces. Feces of the the infected animal like pig and cow and so on. 
Number four, infected patients should be treated with alternatic drugs. Alternatic drugs. Alternatic drugs are the dewormer drugs that are specific for type one. Now we go to another endoparasites. We call it liver flu. Liver flu. The scientific name for liver flu is fasciola hepatica. Fasciola hepatica. That is the scientific name for liver flu. Is endoparasite. In terms of description, how does it look like? Liver flu is a flat worm, leaf like organism. The color is brownish in color. Brown color. And in terms of length, is two cm length. And liver fluid is endoparasite I've already mentioned. The animal affected, which animal do this disease uh, parasite affect? Find it in cattle, it affects sheep, and also affects goats. So cattle, sheep, and goats are the primary hosts. And water snail, take note, water snail is the secondary host. Water snail is the secondary host. The scientific name for water snail is Limnia truncatula. Truncatula is the scientific name. Take note, liver fluid, the primary host is the cattle, sheep, goat. Why the secondary host is water snail. The life cycle of liver fluid. The eggs of the flip are passed out in the feces of farm animals. This one through the feces of farm animals. If the eggs get into a water body, the water body, pond, rivers, and so on, they develop into motile lava. And what is the name of that lava? Motile lava. Motile means movement, a move. Lava that can do what? Move, change position. The name of mortal lava is called me, mera, Miracidia. Miracidia, take note of the lava, which swim about until they find the water snail. Looking for the water snail, be infected. They enter the body of the snail and develop into tiny worms called carcaria. Take note, the first one is the egg. Through the feces of the fluid, the egg enter the body, water body of the end, the organism, and form a mortal organism lava, and that lava is miracidia, until they find the snail to do what? To enter the body of the snail, and from there, tiny worms will come out. And that tiny worm, we call it cacaria. The cacaria leave the snail and may enter the body of a farm animal in its drinking water or may affect the vegetation. Surround themselves very well with the thick walls and form what we call cysts form what we call what cysts. What am I talking about? Cacaria. Cacaria enter the, the surrounding water and get infected to the farm animal. And find the farm, a farm animal and surround that farm animal and form a wall that is very thick and form what we call cysts, which may then be eaten with grass by a grazing farm animal. Remember, the primary host are the grazing what animal. The cicaria come out of the cysts in the body of the farm animal. The cicaria comes of this, the cicaria, sorry, the cicaria come of the cysts in the body of the farm animal. In the body of the farm animal, what do that cicaria do? The cicaria make their way to the liver, who go straight, that cicaria goes straight to the liver and then to the bile, which place liver and bile of duck. The bile duck. Look at the spelling. That is not the spelling. 
D U C K is not that dot. D U C T. Bile dot. That is where the cicaria goes to the liver and to the bile dot, where they grow into adult flukes. During this journey, the flukes damage the liver and affect its function. The adult fluke. The adult flukes may block the bile ducts and affect the digestion of the farm animal. Please take note of the, this life cycle. Look at the diagram of the life cycle. If you are looking at this, you will see numbers. Starting with number one, embryo, embryonated eggs, pass in feces, from feces. Go to the second arrow, embryonated eggs in water, from feces to water. Then the motile larva, Miracida ash, penetrated the snail, penetrate the snail. Go to the number four, not all the organism will eat at that, only the water snail. And see what is formed. You form the cyst. From the cyst, you have a radian. After the radian, you have secaria. Look at how the secaria look like. From there, it pans into the free swimming secaria. It will insist on the water plant. Go to number six. Water plant ingested by humans human, sheep, or cattle. See how it goes straight to where? The duodenum. The duodenum, which is on the metric trap. The duodenum, the first part of small intestine. You know the intestine of man is the host. We are talking about liver fluid. Go straight to the duodenum. In the duodenum, you have the liver and also have the bile dots. Please take note. Finally, you see the number seven and number eight. At the end of it, you go straight to the adult hepatic, that is the liver and the bile dot. Take note of this cycle. The first step will be the egg, embryonated, that is egg with embryo, passing out from the feces. Then to the water, then the motor lava form meracida then enter the snail water snail inside the water snail it will form cysts after that radian then cicaria then it continue the cycle again look at the diagram of liver fluid the liver fluid you see the mouth here you see the oral sucker oral sucker see the genital pore the genital pore that is for reproduction going posteriorly you will see the secretory pore for excretion what are the economic important of liver fluid i've already mentioned economic important means good and the bad things from the liver fluid number one Liver flukes causes diseases, and what is the name of the disease? We call it chistosomiasis. Chistosomiasis, or you call it bihazia. Take note of the disease caused by liver flu. Bihazia, or you call it cystosomiasis. That is the snail fever. Number two, economic important, it causes anemia, loss of blood. Number three, it obstructs the bile dots. Bile dots, you know what you mean by bile, the, by the function of bile. is for digestion, fat digestion, emulsification of fat. When this bile part is blocked, what will happen? The fat will not be digested. Number four, it leads to digestive disturbances. Five, it causes liver rot, leading to drowsiness and death. How can we control this disease, liver flu? Number one, 
we have to drain pasture properly drain pasture properly since wet pasture can harbor what snail can hold what snail two introduce duck and goose to eat up the snail and three use line in pasture to check eggs of liver fluid from arching use lime in pasture to check eggs of liver flutes from arching we move on to the end of the lesson which is assignment evaluation before we go to this as a summary we talk about the parasites we know parasite could be endoparasite or ectoparasite for today's lesson, we have just finished with two endoparasites. Then ectoparasite, that is outside, outside the parasite, outside the body of host. <coughs> that one we are going to treat next lesson. <coughs> Evaluation. One, describe the life cycle of tenia solu. That is step one. 2A, list three economic importance of tape one. List three economic importance of tape one. 2B, state two adaptive features of tape one to its habitat. <coughs> Sorry. State two adaptive features of tape one to its habitat. That is, adaptive feature features that enable the tape worm to cope or adapt very well in the host intestine. For the feedback, you can link us through SS2 at brightfuturecollege.com or you can use my WhatsApp number display on the screen. We'll meet again in the next lesson. Bye for now.